morning, everyone on God Manifest. We thank you, Lord. Uh, we thank you that all y'all joined us here. And also for everyone who joined us, um, everyone who joined us online as well. Um, today, we're going we're gonna to start a new chapter. This is the first service of the year. And, and we ch we're changing things up like we shared in our last service. So uh, I'm going to be teaching about angels today. But it's time for tithes and offerings. So if you'd like to, like to give, I ask that you just close your eyes and just ask God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for giving them all a number. Whatever number you place on their hearts, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for giving them the provisions to provide those. We thank you, Lord, that, that we sow this money into good soil. We thank you, Lord, for, for that the money that's sown into here goes into missions in Thailand, goes into missions in Kenya, goes into missions in Houston, goes into the speakers as well. So we thank you, Lord, that whatever amount that you place on their heart, we thank you, Lord, for releasing them to, to sow into this in Jesus' name. All right, well, um, Scott Windrum called me just yesterday and, and confirmed that he is speaking on January 21st. So mark your calendar, Scott Windrum and Shannon Windrum are going to come out. If you all have never seen them online, you're in for an amazing treat for coming out. Just how God flows through them prophetically. Uh, he flows through Scott prophetically through music. And what God does is just downloads a tune that he plays on his guitar, and then God downloads the lyrics, and he sings it over people. Um, how many here knows, know anything about angels? Have you seen an angel? Are you interested? <laughs> Josiah, who's our one-year-old nephew, raised his hand. Um, it's really interesting. So, you know, earlier on when, when, I, when Olivia and I were dating, we went out to, da uh, to Dallas. And we, we did some street evangelism. Um, we joined a, a group called Fish for Trish, and we were just out there evangelizing and just having a great time. But when we came back, that was when a, that was the start of me seeing Olivia every day, other than my trip to Kenya and my trip to Phoenix and my trip to Brownville. Other than that, I've seen her every day since that day. But we, were, we went, went out and we walked her two dogs at that time, and we sat down. There was a tree in their neighborhood, and Olivia looked at me and said, hey, I think you're a seer. Um, do you ever see angels? And I said, you know, it's things that I typically don't share with people. It creeps them out. If you see angels. So I turned to Olivia and I said, I do see angels. I said, you want to see angels? And she said, yes. And I said, you want me to impart that to you? She said, yes. And I said, all right. And I grabbed her hands and I said, if you can see angels, you'll also be able to see the demons because they're fallen angels. And she jerked her hands away from me and said, no, <laughs> no, I live alone. I'm going to home alone. I, 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 am, I do not want to see demons. Is there any way you can do without? And I said, not that I know of. Because for me, I grew up seeing things my, all my life. I grew up knowing things all my life. And those who know me know that, you know, the prophetic has been a big part of my life. Even, even when I didn't know it was called the prophetic. Um, it was part of my Buddhist life and now a huge part of the Christian life and a, part, a huge part of this church. We have a very prophetic church. Um, so anyways, well anyways, I wanted to dive into it. Um, there's a lot of wacky teachings about angels. There's a lot of wacky teachings about the supernatural. Uh, I just wanted to start off saying, I believe in angels. I've seen angels. I don't believe in worshiping angels. Um, and so I just wanted to go through some scriptures to, uh, to, to kind of teach you all and, and, and to teach people online um, what angels are supposed to be doing in our lives. And I said, so here's... This is Revelations 22, 8 through 9. I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Um, and I'll, well, once the cameras turn off and we're doing our discussions, we'll share a little bit about what's been going on with the Passion Translation with Brian Simmons and Candace Simmons, the translators of the, of the Passion Translation Bible. We've been in contact with them. We've been talking to them on a regular basis. We just saw them at Joan Hunter's ministry. Uh, they actually greeted us with kisses. Um, so, you know, so anyways. It's just some real exciting stuff. So it says in Revelation 22, 8 through 9, again, this is Passion Translation. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things and saw, and when I heard and saw it all, I fell down to my face to worship the messenger. In this instance, he's talking about an angel who showed me these things. But he said to me, to John, don't do it. I am but a fellow servant with you, and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who cling to the words of this book, worship God. There's a lot of people that, that believe in worshiping saints and worshiping uh, 
uh, angels and worshiping demons and worshiping Satan and worshiping anything but God, but Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, that's completely an error. Um, it says right here, loud and clear in Revelations, that, that he's a, angels are fellow servants. Angels were here before the first person was ever created on this earth, before God created anybody. Now, what are angels? Hebrews 1.14, again, this is the Passion Translation. Uh, the angels are spirit messengers sent by God to serve those who are going to be saved. The other translation that says serve those who are serving God. Um, so he's serving those who are going to be saved, which is everyone who is unsaved. And, and he's, they're also here to serve those who are saved. And I'll, I'll go a little bit more about some testimonies that, of things that uh, we've seen and experienced. When do angels move? I was in error when I first got saved. I figured, hey, if I'm a Christ follower and I am an inheritance of the kingdom, I can do as God does on behalf of God, and the angels must listen to me. Well, the angels showed me grace and, and listened to a lot of things I was asking them to do until one day God, God showed up in my house and, and uh, corrected me. I repented, and now I realize it's not our duty to control the angels, but it's the angels' desire to hear God's heart and to hear God, what God is saying and what God has said, and, the, and they bring it to action. So Psalms 103.20. So bless the Lord, all his messengers of power, for you are his mighty heroes who listen intently to the voice of, of his word to do it. It's amazing. Once I realize that the angels are really sitting, sitting, waiting for a direction from God. There's no moment they hear the direction, they're set off. They're set off to do things. Um, as ambassadors of God, we can proclaim something that's, un, that's, that's within the will of God and the angels hearken to it and they move. And the will and character of God. Psalms 91, 11 through 13. God sends angels with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and it keep you from stumbling. You know, trials are everywhere. The enemy is constantly trying you. If the, if the enemy can, can test and try Jesus Christ, we're not immune to trials. We're not immune to testing from the enemy. They're, they're, his goal is to wait until we're weak, we're tired, we're exhausted, like what happened with Jesus in his, in his 40 days in the wilderness. So he's waiting for an ideal time when we're worn out from our everyday lives, from work, from family, from whoever. Um, rarely family, right? Um, but when we're worn out, the devil comes in and starts whispering. When we're, when, we're, when we're about to give up, the devil starts screaming. That's their job. And I'll go more into the assignments of, of demons and the assignments of angels, but I don't believe in staying spending too much time about the demons because they have nothing on us. Roles of angels. Okay, so in Exodus 23, 20, it says, See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along your way, to bring you to a place I have prepared. I'll go a little bit, I'm going to go a little bit into um, guardian angels after the cameras turn off. Um, and just kind of explain things. A, a, a lot of you have, have, have gotten um, words on, on your angels. What I've learned about angels, which is extremely interesting, is the angels assigned to you from God really explain your character, your, your characteristics. There are going to be certain things you, you, you lean towards, certain things you're attracted to, certain things that you do first. It's those things that, hey, I've gone to strangers and and, and and God said, tell them about their guardian angels. It's not something I do often. 
but I've gone to strangers. And as I'm told him, I said, does, does that mean anything to your, to your personality? Does that explain some of your traits? Because God's going to assign people according to what he's called you to do, to, to equip you, to protect you, to, bring, to be a messenger to you. Okay, Psalms 34, 7. And this is in an NIV. Angel of the Lord stooped down to listen as I prayed, encircling me, empowering me, and showing me how to escape. He would do this for everyone who fears the Lord. And again, God's, God's there. God's all-powerful, and, he, and he's, he's equipped us. But that doesn't negate angels. Nor should we focus on them, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't disqualify them as well. They're, they're alive and active. They're doing more to now because I mean, darkness has, has, has risen over this country. And I believe the light is about to burn it all off. And they're working overtime. The last thing you want are, are bored angels. So keep praying. Keep speaking things over, over, the things that are over your life. Matthew 4, 11. At once the accuser left them. And the angel suddenly gathered around Jesus to minister to his needs. If angels minister to Jesus, don't you think angels minister to us? And it's totally okay. Uh, I've seen angels the size of G.I. Joe's, and I've seen angels bigger than buildings. But each one of them had a purpose in the lives that I've seen them over. It's really interesting. Do angels still exist? Obviously, I believe they do, which is why we're talking about it today. Um, Matthew 18.10. Be careful that you, that you do not corrupt one of these little ones. For I can assure you that in heaven, each of their angel, angelic guardians have instant, instant access to the heavenly father. So basically is saying, hey, if you're going after one of God's kids, their angels are waiting for God to say something. And the, the moment God speaks, it's going to happen. Your angels are going to, they're, they're in charge to protect you, but they're also waiting for God to say something or God's ambassadors to speak something, and it happens. They're released. Okay, so Hebrews 13, 2. And show hospitality to strangers, for they may be angels from God showing up as your guests. And I've been in situations where I'm hanging out with, or I'm going through a hard time and I run into somebody and I'm wondering if they're an angel. I've been accused of being an angel myself. There was a situation where I'm driving down 59 and God says, pull over, um, pull over and, and, and that's your friend. And I argued with God and I said, no, my friend drives a red truck. And God says, well, she got a new car, pull over. And, and so I, I decided to pull closer to the car, to the, to the left lane of 59, and I'm driving, now I'm going 35, just to prove to God I'm right, and boom, she's standing there. And I, I zoom over, pick her up, I, I orchestrate the tow truck, and at the end of it, we're sitting in third, now we, we, we get pulled off and we're in third ward, about to head to my convenience store, and she goes, I've been wondering, because the last two times I met you, miracles have happened. Are you an angel? Do you know, she was trying to call me. She remembered all my numbers except the last two. And she's been, she was trying all the, every combination. So I'm standing behind her and I said, hey. And she turns and she goes, <gasps> and she's looking, she showed me, she shows me who, who she was calling. It had all my numbers but the last two. And I said, you're, you're almost there. You, you flipped those two. I said, she goes, I've been trying to call you. Did I call you by accident? I said, no. And I said, God asked me to come get you. Um, and I said, I was working with him. I'll explain later. And she's looking at me going, you must be an angel because God sent you there. I said, I am not an angel, but I'm a saint. I'm a son of God, and, 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 and God is using me, and he can do the same for you. She became a Christian. She joined the church I was a part of. I was part of a mega church. She joined that church. I ran into her, her husband, and her daughter. And her husband, I prophesied that her husband would come back to her when, she, when he was her boyfriend, and she, she had a kid. And he came back to her that, next, that night. And said, hey, I'm coming back. And if this Jesus Christ thing and this church thing is, 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 
is, is what I need to do, I'll do it. How amazing. But we really, I'm saying that, but also you don't know who you're entertaining. You don't know who you've encountered. You don't know who you're helping. It could be an angel waiting with, with a, God's, God's released an angel for a miracle for your life. And you're driving down the street and God tells you to turn down this dirt road and, and there's a dude just sitting down in the corner and, and God wants you to hand him a dollar or a thousand dollars, whatever God tells you to do. And that, that releases your miracle. The angel doesn't need your money. The angel doesn't need the sandwich you want to hand him. What the angel is waiting for is for, for, for you to listen to what God is saying to you to do. And that obedience, and God has told him, hey, when Olivia does this, you're released to do this. I had a friend of mine, Dave Hunter. He was sharing that he's out in, he's out in Louisiana, and I know there's some Cajuns here today. Um, he's, out, he's out in Louisiana, and he was like, middle of the, middle of the night, God wakes him up and says, dumpster, dumpster dive. You know, which is a normal. So he gets, he says, okay, because he's a radical dude. So he hops in his car and he starts driving. Which dumpster should I dive into? God brings him to one dumpster. He dives. God says, look for something that looks like this. He grabs it, goes to the next dumpster, the next dumpster, the next dumpster, the next dumpster. He says, he ends up being in the middle of the ghetto. And God, God shows him how to put this thing together. He said, when he finishes it, it looks like a trumpet. And God says, stand outside and play it. He said he picks it up, he blows into it to a surprise and made noise, and he was able to, to hit a few in- keys, because he's a musician. And he says, at that very moment, a man, a man was walking by pushing a shopping cart. And if Dave Hunter is watching, you can email me the full story, because uh, it's been 12 years since I heard it. He's pushing a shopping cart and stopped and said, that's a, that's a miracle trumpet. And he, 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 he leaves the shopping cart, walks across the street, lays his hand on a homeless man that was in a wheelchair. The homeless man pops up, starts to scream because he got healed. And he runs over there to, to, to interview this guy. He talks to him, turns around. The, the cart's still sitting there, but the, the guy was gone. And he asked God, what's up with that? And God said, the angel was assigned to be in that spot waiting for you to be obedient so I can release that miracle for that man. Could God, can, could God have healed him? Yes. When, when, when God does stuff like that for me, I realize that it wasn't about the miracle for Danelle. It was about the relationship with me and him. Yes, he cares about her. Yes, he wants her to have that miracle. But he wants me to have more faith and trust in his voice. And, he, and in instances, he may want Chris to have enough faith to stand on the corner of the street play a trumpet that he put together with trash. Who knows? Who knows? I've seen angels. I've seen Olivia. When Olivia and I first met, we spent day and night just praying and prophesying and all these things. Um, but one night she was sitting there. We, we had a hard day, and, and we were just talking about things of God, and she was searching scripture. And she started, re- started telling me things that she's, been, she's found and things that she's read about. And, and as she's reading it, she's searching for it and looking for, for, these, uh, for the secrets within the Bible. And then I heard a, rush, uh, a, a, a rustling, a, a rustling in, the, in the air. And I looked up and I saw angels all stand up, lean their ears towards Olivia. Because they're, they're not released to have revelation. So they, when we speak revelations, the angels' ears Angels' hearts come alive. When we're speaking revelation God's giving us, the angels wake up and go as though God is speaking himself because he is. When we gather in his name and, we, and we're in worship, angels are amongst you. They're created to worship. You see in revelations, holy, holy, holy. They're, they're screaming, they're singing, they're celebrating God. And what's that? They celebrate God more than us. God didn't save them. He saved us. I was just talking to Crystal about that. God saved us. If he doesn't do anything else in 2018 for us, what he did for us over 2,000 years ago is more than enough. But God is always doing. 
we were at this um, Joan Hunter ministry and Brian Simmons, man, he breaks down the word like I've never seen before. Forgot which scripture it was. I think it was in uh, the, uh, the Song of Solomon. But, it's, uh, but one of the words, I think it might have been daughter or sister, got translated into ravish. So he reads the scripture and he says, this scripture is basically saying, you're, you're, you, when you look at me, you ravish my heart, Jesus says. When you look at me, Chris, you ravish my heart. And he says, Jesus Christ, the God who can't be conquered, can only be conquered through our affection towards him. Our affection conquers him. And he says, a lot of me, a lot of people may think it's blasphemy, right? And he says, what do we call it? We're, we're more than conquerors. Our love conquers. CJ conquers CJ, uh, Chris's heart. When he looks at you and says, Daddy, your heart comes alive. Danelle's heart comes alive when she says, Mommy. But how much more when Danelle looks at Chris as a wife? Or Chris looks at Jeanette as a son. Those relationships in our life reflect the, the, the many, many as, uh, facets of our relationship with Christ. Son, awesome. Bride, amazing. Brother, sister, unbelievable. But here's another title, just like I was sharing, Ravisher of God's Heart. You ravish it. You conquered his heart. You are a conqueror of God's heart. Man, that blew my mind. I rarely repeat people. And God's been working, me on, working with me on that. He says, he says, yes, he said it, but I gave it to him. And he says, I want you to start sharing the things that you're hearing people teach you now. So in angels, even the spiritual world, you, those with children, you probably see your child just glance off in the distance and follow something, and you look out, you don't see anything. Kids are so innocent, they see in the supernatural. I know when I first met Isaac, he sees in the supernatural. We, I remember, and he still does, but I remember talking to him about it when he was five or six to find out what he sees, how he sees, because I'm curious. I see a certain way. We all see differently. I love it. It was a burden on my life until I became a pastor. Now it's given me, given us the tools to set people free. And, and God knows that it's our heart that each of you refine your ability to see, to set others free. Because it's not about us. It's only about us to Jesus. Jesus looks at, 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 at us and says, CJ, it's all about you. Isaac, it's all about you. Josiah, it's all about you. Crystal, it's all about you. And it's our job to say, all this is all about you. Let this be a sacrifice unto you. Be willing to lay it down for his kingdom. It might be the Old Testament. It says beauty for ashes. Olivia? All right. Well, it says in scripture, it talks about beauty for ashes. I remember when God first highlighted that to me and I says, I said, wow. And I said, um, and God says, how do you get ashes? And God says, you burn something. You burn something. And in the kingdom, how do you, what, what, why do you burn something? It's called a burnt offering. So when you put an offering at the altar, you're saying, look, relationship, boom. I'm laying it out at the altar. I'm done. I remember before I met Olivia, I was like, I, I had a, a, cra a relationship that wasn't probably the healthiest for me. And I said, I am done, not only with that relationship, I am done with all dating. My buddy Patrick and I are going to move to Africa and be missionary dresser of life. Because I, I, I don't think there's a woman out there for me. I'm done. Olivia, in the same instance, was out there 
rocked by God in Denton at those New Year's and says, man, you know what? I am putting husband on the altar as a burnt sacrifice. We met a month later, and she was mad at me. I'm, I'm trying to cut words out as I'm speaking. No, no, she was mad. She goes, oh, she was mad at God. She goes, what? it's about us, God. I'm having this, this amazing love story with you now. Why would you bring Jonathan into my life? He, I love him. I, and God said, because you gave it up. I remember when I met Olivia, my friend Patrick said, she must be the one because I've never seen you take your, keep your eyes and your focus and your heart on anybody but God. And I remember I asked God about that. God says, I'll share as long as I'm first. One of the beautiful things I think in worship was there's a song called Draw Me Close. Draw me close to you. And as I was singing that out loud, God says, when you marry I will allow you to sing love songs that are written for me to your wife only. That's the level of love God wants the husband and the wife to have. And I remember asking God, why? And God says, because you're my wife. You're my spouse, and you sing it to me, and I will allow you to sing it to your spouse. Not because my spouse is an equal to God, but my spouse is to be loved and cherished. If y'all are going through hard stuff, man, turn on worship. Do something extravagant. Sing, dance, scream. You got an instrument? Try to play it. When you do anything onto God, the angels wake up. I've met people before where they sit there and they're all, woe is me, right? My life sucks. Nothing ever happens. I'm like, do you always speak negative about yourself? Yeah. You always be always negative about your family? Yeah, because everything sucks. And I went, do you realize how bored your angels are? I said, I can see them. They're petitioning God, saying, God, can you assign me to someone else? Because I spent the last 30 years crying with these people. And I've, then I've seen angels get promoted. How amazing is that? I watched one of Olivia's angels get promoted. Olivia was in the middle. Of, we were going through, I forgot what it was. It was a, it's something really hard. And all of a sudden, clicked. She started worshiping. Started doing the, I'm sitting there. I'm still mad. And all of a sudden, God, God gave me an open heaven vision. And the angel got promoted. And God says, you've protected her heart, and I'm going to promote you. And assigned a new angel. God looks at man, God looks at the heart. Everything, everything in the world spiritually is about the purity of your heart. The motives. If you're, when your motives are right, the angels move. When your motives are wrong, the angels, the angels can't do a thing. It's pretty amazing. I don't know, but we're gonna, I'm gonna pray real quick and we're just gonna shut off the cameras and we're just gonna have a Q and A session, a discussion. Those who are all watching online, who are watching this after the fact, come out Sundays. We start at, we, doors open at 10.30, we start at 11 o'clock. Um, we're changing the structure of the whole thing. So moving forward, we're just gonna have a quick sermon. We're gonna discuss, we're gonna teach something really quick. And then we're gonna talk about, we're gonna have activation, discussion, prayer, and a session. Um, some days we may, we just may pack up if God says, hey, guys, I want you to head out to, to Walmart or head out to the park and, and, and evangelize, we're going to release that to anyone who's watching online, anyone who's here to go with us. So it's just going to be an exciting time. It's going to be all about discipleship, growing, and being a family. So we invite you out. And Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that we, we don't have any bored angels here. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, so that you give us the words and the and the and you give us the words and the authority to speak what you put on our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that you've written your promises on our hearts. And as we begin to speak them, the angels begin to move. We thank you, Lord, that our worship and our eyes and our heart and our affection is on to you. We thank you, Lord, that you've ravished our hearts. And you've overtaken us with your love. In Jesus' name, amen.